Hello everyone, this is Preheat again, and uh, welcome back from the holidays. Uh, we still have a new year upon us very soon, but uh, I wanted to go ahead and push out another Evoker video to give you an update on how to deal single target damage, uh, specifically how to use Disintegrate whenever you're in your cooldowns, how to aggressively chain uh, during your cooldowns, and how to use the staff, and just kind of talking about other stuff that you might have questions about because there is a lot to talk about. So we're just going to jump right into the gameplay. Uh, so moving... On to the first topic. Okay, so I know a lot of people are going to have questions about this. I'm just going to talk about this right away. Um, all right, so my character has a lot of mastery. Okay, there's no real amount that you want to get to. It's just as much as you can get. Uh, you know, feasibly with the, with the mastery, just try to pump that as high as you can. And of course, haste is going to be the best stat that you can get with your mastery. So ideally, you're going to have mastery haste, but in some cases, mastery crit is okay too. Just try to avoid versatility, although it will be impossible to fully avoid it since a lot of the tier gear has it. And your best ring has it and other stuff has it as well so in terms of embellishments the lariat is very very good but it's not uh, it's not the best right if you have a really good neck already the lariat's not going to do much for you you really just want to look for the biggest upgrades uh, item level is going to be more important in most cases than the embellishment because the embellishments are only worth like one percent usually but the the you know the item level is going to be huge right so having the ability to choose the stats on it and choose the exact makeup here with the embellishment it's pretty big i have a belt and boots on right now i will say though that these boots with the blue silk one on here the mastery this is almost never up in mythic progression it's up like 20 percent of the time so it's pretty garbage but it is up usually during my cooldowns so i'm using it and it is quite good like at least in sims ideally if it's up all the time which it isn't right let's just be honest like in easy content this will probably be up a lot but in actually challenging content this is almost never up okay so I do think it's a bit of bait when it comes to the Sims, but obviously, you know, make your own decision there. I think the potion one's pretty good. I'm using the potion one. I think it's especially good for like specific fights in, uh, that I'm progressing on right now. For instance, Grim Totem, which I'll show some gameplay from. And then if you have versatility as your lowest stat, which I do now, but I didn't at the time, the Venom Boots are quite good. And I can actually craft these. I'll show them really quickly on the screen here. It's these boots right here. You do have to make your crafter do a dungeon. They have to go and do the Brackenhide Hollow and they have to use the altar at the very end, the altar of rot. It's really terrible to craft these. Uh, so please tip whoever is crafting these well because it really sucks to make them. But anyways, having these at 418 would be really nice. I wish I had them. Obviously though, if you have like the firing with a lot of versatility on it and you just have a lot of verse elsewhere, it's gonna be hard to make verse your lowest stat. But if verse is your lowest stat, this is a really, really good item to pick up. So definitely be looking for these boots. And then in terms of other stuff, I mean, there are other good options, but I don't know if I would really, I don't know if I'd really go for them. Like these boots here, they, they do really good damage, right? But they, they slow you down by 10% permanently. So that's terrible. You definitely don't want to be slowed all the time. Uh, and then other stuff can be good too. I know the offhand is good if you don't have the staff, but I really recommend just try to get the evoker staff. Getting the heroic version of this staff, the Karnak staff, is better than every other staff in the game except for Mythic. Carnal uh, X. So literally the only thing that beats this staff is the mythic version of itself. Okay, this is better than every other mythic weapon. Try to get your staff if you can. It's not a rare drop. It drops actually pretty frequently. Um, oh, and obviously my trinkets, right? So I have the Iridus Fragment still. This is not because it's overpowered. This is just because I've had really bad luck with trinkets. Luckily, I got a feather yesterday, which was really awesome, but I still haven't gotten a Horn of Valor and uh, raid trinkets would also be really, really good if I could get my hands on one of those. So this isn't because I have an overpowered trinket or anything like that. I'm just letting you know this is just because I've been unlucky. Okay, anyways, aside from that, though, four-piece staff, I, I'm counting my blessings. We're going to talk about how to do the opener now, though. So whenever you are doing the opener, the first thing you want to do is precast a living flame and then immediately use your staff. The reason why you want to precast a living flame is because you can cast it before the timer goes down and actually has a travel time. The staff, on the other hand, once you finish it, is going to instantly go off and it's going to pull the boss early if you use it before the timer is done. So uh, you, you want to precast your Living Flame into the staff. And the staff actually does work with Mastery now, so it's going to deal more damage if the target has full health. Okay, so we'll go ahead and show cooldowns here. Living Flame into your staff, like we said. Make sure you don't interrupt it. Let that thing fully channel here. And then I'm going to open with the Shattering Star, pop my cooldowns, get out my Empowered Spells first, and then I'm going to be aggressively chaining those Disintegrates, going to be clipping them as well, and we want to clip them so that we can get those extensions on Dragon Rage. Try to always use your Shattering Star whenever you have, uh, you know, some Essence to spend during it. It's pretty big. Use your Empowers as soon as they come off cooldown, 
uh, but obviously don't, you know, don't chain it too much or don't clip your spells too much for them. And it goes really quick, especially if you have PI, but you want to make sure that you're getting those extensions. It's going to look really close here, but I was able to get it in just in time. And now we're going to tip the scales. This is why we held on to it. So we'd have it for this vital moment right here for that last extension. And then from here on out, it's pretty much smooth sailing. And I didn't Shattering Star there because I wanted to make sure I had Essence Burst for after Dragon Rage, but then I got a Hoarded Power proc. So hey, sometimes that happens. And that caused me to cap out on Essence, which is totally fine. If you're coming out of your cooldowns, just try to avoid it otherwise. And then obviously try to bank for your Shattering Star whenever it comes up, right? And uh, it's really good if Eternity Surge matches up with it too, but don't hold on to Eternity Surge for your Shattering Star window. That's really bad. You want to be sending those pretty much on cooldown with Causality. And yeah, I mean, outside of your cooldowns, it's pretty laid back, honestly, uh, which is good, right? We need it to be a little laid back because the cooldowns feel very, very hectic. Uh, but you're pretty much just biding your time. And remember, if your Dragon Rage is coming off cooldown in like the le in the next 10 or so seconds, hold on to your Empowers. Do not use them. Wait for it. If it's going to be over 10 seconds, though, go ahead and send your Empowers. But, you know, it can also depend on the fight, right? If there's a fight where you know the kill time is going to be like 6 minutes 20 exactly, then obviously in that case you wouldn't want to delay at all. But you'll see me holding on to my Fire Breath here because I know Dragon Rage is coming up soon. And I'm going to try to get my Attorney Surge off cooldown here as well, which should should be pretty easy right we just need like one more cast here there we go and we'll just go right into our cooldowns again just like before we're aggressively chaining our disintegrates we're clipping the end of them we're always casting the next spell after three ticks of disintegrate and sending the sharing star here since we have disintegrates to cast sending the fire breath we have the Burnout, which is going to give us Sleeping Flames to Essence Burst. Love to see it. And then there's the Eternity Surge bug. And watch, this is actually going to cost me an extension. I hate this bug so much. It's so, like, Evoker DPS in cooldowns is, like, so down to the wire that having, like, even the slightest hiccup like that will actually cause you to lose an extension. And look, I didn't get that extension right there. I would have had it with Fire Breath otherwise. That just, man, that really grinds my gears. But yeah, hopefully they fix that bug soon. Okay, so for those of you who are still confused about clipping versus chaining, Chaining refers to whenever you move a tick into the next one, right? So if I'm channeling my Disintegrate right here, and then I cast Disintegrate again right at this moment, it's going to move this four into the next one. Okay, so that's what creates this one right here. You're only ever going to be able to move one of these ticks down, but you're going to be able to have five ticks in the next Disintegrate, which is great. Outside of Dragon Rage, you always want to do this if you're channeling Disintegrates back to back. And of course, if you're not channeling Disintegrate into another Disintegrate, if you're casting a different spell, let this full play out, right? Let the whole thing play out. Do not interrupt it. You don't want to clip the last tick. Keep that tick in there outside of Dragon Rage. During Dragon Rage, however, you're always going to want to basically interrupt it with another cast or another disintegrate after the third tick. Okay, it's always going to be after the third tick in this case. So it's going to be right here. You would interrupt this with either Azure Strike, right? If you're going to be casting another spell, maybe an Empower spell, or with another Disintegrate. And if you have this one right here, because you've chained your Disintegrate into another Disintegrate, you're going to still do it right here after the third one, okay? During Dragon Rage, it's always after three. Always after three, okay? So you're not going to let these last two play out during Dragon Rage. You're not going to let this last one play out during Dragon Rage. You're only going to have the five here if you're, you know, chaining it into another disintegrate but it's always after three unless you're not able to extend your dragon rage any further if you're at the maximum if you know ahead of time like i'm not going to have enough time to get another fire breath off or another attorney surge off right which uh it's going to depend on your haste right like everyone's going to have a different level of haste it's going to depend on lust pi stuff like that but if you know you're not going to get another one if it's your last one then you can start letting those fully play out right let them go all the way until the end or in this case, you know, you could uh, chain it here and then let this one fully play out. Um, or, you know, you can use your staff too if your staff is available, if it's not your first Dragon Rage. But yeah, hopefully this uh, hopefully this helps. And once again, if you want the weak ore that shows the tick marks on your cast bar, then uh, check out the description below. It'll be down there. So for AoE, obviously, you know, you, you want to be like moving in with the tank. Try not to pull threat, but try to get some charge blast stacks. Just throw out some Azure Strikes as you need to, right? And then whenever it's time, you want to obviously use your Sharing Star, pop your big cooldowns, rank one fire breath here at the start uh, you can use a max rank one if you want to it really just depends on when you want to use it i prefer to keep it for a little longer it's up to you though 
But yeah, for the first one, usually I go with that one. Oops, I meant to Azure Strike there. Not a, not Living Flame. That's fine though. And then I'm gonna use the Max Rank one here. Boom. Get this one out. And yeah, I mean it's it's pretty straightforward, right? Just basically alternating between pyres and other stuff. Try to end with two essence bursts if you can. And then obviously use deep breath whenever you want. It can be on cooldown if it if the pack's gonna last long enough for you to use two, right? And outside the cooldowns, you, you generally want to fully charge your fire breath, but it kind of just depends on the situation once again. Obviously, uh, you know, just play it by ear. And at three or more targets, you're going to be Azure Striking unless you have Leaping Flames, right? So that's why I'm ignoring this Burnout proc right now. And then whenever Fire Breath is back off cooldown, you're going to use this. And if the targets are going to die, like, pretty soon, I would fully charge it. Or if they have, like, a health that's actually moving, I'll fully charge it. But if it's a AoE pull like this on the dummies where they're just going to stay full health forever, you just use Rank 1, right? Because, obviously, it doesn't really matter. It's just about the mastery. The mastery and the leaping flames are the big thing and then here i have leaping flames so i'm just gonna actually hard cast the living flame just so it hits everything um you can also uh one thing that's really really good to do is if you have that big leaping flames right so like i have the buff ready so like if you can heal it like without using living flame look so like i have uh the the buff stacked up here scarlet adaptation this is gonna make my living flame hit way harder right because it gets that scarlet adaptation buff for all of them so you saw how much damage that one did um, try to throw out some healing that isn't leaping, uh, Living Flames, because obviously you don't want to waste the proc, right? Uh, so that's going to be like Verde Embrace, that's going to be Emerald uh, Blossom. Just any way you can heal. Renewing Blaze also works. Anything that isn't Living Flame, and then it's going to do significantly more damage. And since it's AoE, you get even more out of it. Uh, there's more information in my guide on Wowhead about this, and like how to prime your AoE from pull to pull. But this is generally what I would recommend in Mythic Plus. And, uh, you know, if you want more information on Mythic Plus and just how to do specific keys, what talents to run, be sure to go check out my stream. Once again, twitch.tv slash preheat if you want to watch me play Evoker live in keys. Okay, and here we're just going to show uh, the very, very start of a dungeon. This is only a 19, so it's a pretty small one. We won't even show, like, the full cooldowns. I just want to give you an idea of, like, how to kind of set up for the pull. So, obviously, you don't want to pull threat. Let your tank establish threat. You can start as you're striking. Usually, that's a pretty safe way. I'm not disintegrating here because I don't want to pull threat. But I'm just trying to get some charge blasts, and then I know his PI is on me, so I immediately go into my cooldowns. Uh, you know, you can tip the scales on your first uh, fire breath if you want, um, or you can hold it, right? It really just depends on the situation. I like to usually tip the scales right away, though, if it's the first pull of the dungeon, just so that in the subsequent uh, dragon rages, my tip the scales is up at the start. Okay, so this is going to be the big pull on the Academy, and we're basically just going to bring everything together here. I'm going to pull the ads on the right. Uh, you'll see me use my cooldowns, tip the scales, just like everything you've seen before. You'll also see me use deep breath during Dragon Rage. You typically don't want to do that, but I, I did it for utility in this case. Um, so yeah, we'll just let the pull uh, play out here. So waiting for the tank to establish threat here, getting everything grouped up. And it looks like it's grouped, so I send my cooldowns. And I am using uh, Shattering Star still. I had like one of the little ads targeted. You probably wouldn't use Shattering Star in most cases. Yeah, on a big pull like this, Shattering Star isn't going to do much for you. You probably don't want to use it. Unless you're hitting like a priority target. Which I wasn't there. I was just hitting a small ad. And I have some of the ads targeted here. And they're rooted and it gets the pull kind of uh, scattered. But the tank actually needed that because they were saying that they were needing to kite. And that's pretty much it. Okay, so I'm going to let some gameplay examples from my Mythic Raid uh, on Groom Totem play out here, just so that you can get an idea of the opener. This is all with PI, all these pulls, so I have Lust and PI up, and you can just watch how fast my bar goes. And I don't play perfectly, right, because obviously there's mechanics happening, there's uh, stuff under my feet, my, uh, my haste is extremely fast, so sometimes it's hard to exactly time it exactly where I want to on Disintegrate. But uh, hopefully this gives you an idea of like approximately what you should have with an opener. And this is, um, of course, with like a 50 second duration on all of my Dragon Rages because I'm getting those big, big extendos. Um, but yeah, sometimes it comes close, but you can see why I hold tip the scales for that Eternity Surge right there. And uh, yeah, it's, it's really good to hold your Eternity Surge in cases like this. 
I'm going to let this one actually play out just a little bit longer so you can see a little bit more. But for the rest of them, I think I'm going to keep it down to the cooldowns. And if you're having trouble getting this down, just be sure to slow this por portion of the video down and just watch my cast sequence on the right. It's right above my details meter. And that way you can see the, the breakdown on the exact abilities I'm using and which order I'm using them in. It looks like we're all stacked up here and I'm going to actually time a deep breath out of this. There we go. Hit both the add and the boss. Filling that add off. All right. And we'll show the next poll here. Same deal. I'm not going to narrate over the rest of these. You can just watch these uh, on your own and watch the breakdown. Once again, it's all kind of the same thing, right? Hopefully you get the uh, the idea once you watch it. But I am going to hold cooldowns for the boss every single time for the boss ad here. And now it's up. I'm going to call for PI and then send them all my cooldowns. And same deal. And they just try to time everything around the movement. So I don't have any wasted GCDs. Everything is being used exactly uh, with the Synegrate's third tech. Let that one fully play out there. I knew I had a movement ability coming up. And I knew I wasn't getting another extension after that one. That was my last extension with the tourney surge. And I was free to get that one. And of course, ending your cooldowns with uh, Essence Burst. Two of them is great, especially if Hoarded Power gives it to you. You can just let those last disintegrates fully play out. Uh, All right, and for the rest of these, I'm just going to let the EU banter play out. So. Yeah, hopefully this uh, helps. Need a lot of defensives to cover this man's body. Exactly. Yeah, I guess Warlocks are squishy, huh? Crocs could, could slash possibly have spare. That's a ready quote. I've got nothing. <laughs> it's the live <laughs> through everything. Just give me the uh, evoker CD. Evoker City, I mean the entire monk class. Thank you. I did a lot of damage this bull in that shit. Ark, you tried having longer arms? I tried. I took all the talents I have for longer arms. Uh, well, I guess that's what you want. All right, and that is going to be it for today. Hopefully these evoker tips will increase your damage, especially your single target or answer any questions that you had. If you like this content, be sure to give it a thumbs up. If you want to see more of my content, be sure to subscribe and hopefully I'll see you in the next one.
Look at my damage right now. Yo, Kevin, Griff talk to reset. Let's go, Lalio. Yep. Got a chest in front of him. Banger. Uh, Bob Bark. Yeah, Bob the Bark. Plus PI equals Paul.